Welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. As a human, we are so designed that we need to be touched. A touch that really goes so deep that it somehow ministers to us. In this episode, I'm going to share insight from John G. Lake. And we're talking about pressing into the deep waters of the sacred place that we might so meet with him and that he might touch us. If you need a touch from heaven, a touch that takes everything that is broken in your life, everything that is injured and damaged, and makes it whole, renews, restores, brings you to that place where you are complete, whole, nothing missing, nothing lacking, then take a hold and let this message truly minister to you. Let's pray and let's press in. Father, we come in that name above all names, the name of Jesus. And we just ask of you, Father, I thank you for eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. That this day we might so meet with you. And that this day as we press into your word, we might be changed, transformed, and have such a touch from you that we are never the same. I thank you, Father, that each person would be blessed and that they would receive something from you. Father, that would truly make them whole, complete, nothing missing, nothing lacking. In the name above all names, the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. John, in his first gospel, starts by making one of the most profound statements in that first chapter. How the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Took on this earthen vessel that we could touch Him, that we could have a point of contact with the Lord God. And He walked among all that they might see and hear and know the Lord God Almighty walking in our midst. I don't think we can fully appreciate the depth that verse says, the revelation being revealed. After his resurrection, he appeared and was touched only by those who loved him, those who believed in him. And we see in Luke 24, verse 39, he says, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. You can touch me. There's something about a touch that we so desperately need. Most of us, maybe all of you, have been in love with somebody. And there's been there's moments where you've had such a holy fellowship, a moment together. Maybe a few words were spoken. And maybe there was only the slightest of touch. But in that moment, something so deep happened to you. You understood that you were treasured, that you were valued. You came away secure. You came away knowing you were loved, knowing you were heard. It lifted you. And that's a natural touch. John G. Lake said, you see, the spirit of a man must contact and know the real spirit of God. Know God. We do not know God with our flesh, with our hands or with our brains. We know God with our spirit. And there must be a spirit-to-spirit connection in the secret place of His presence. That's why we worship Him in spirit. That's why we pray in the spirit. Meet with Him. So that we are never the changed, never the same. Many people write to me, and they're trying to understand the secret place. They say, I didn't feel anything. And I want so hard to explain this that we don't come based on the natural man, based on what we feel, we come by faith. And I assure you that as you meet with him by faith in his word, there is a touch that goes on in the inside, whether you feel something or not. And if you will lay hold of it and receive it, that touch will do something in you that maybe minutes, hours, days later, you begin to realize something has changed. And as you keep coming into the secret place of His presence and there abiding in His Word and fellowshipping with Him, meeting with Him, that each touch, because each point of contact with the Lord God marks you forever. 
And it begins to so change you and bring you out of being dictated to by the natural order where you walk by what you see, by what you feel, and brings you into that which is spiritual. See, this is which is natural. I can touch this and it feels solid. But in reality, there's so much space between these molecules, it shouldn't be. And everything that we see around us is subject to corrosion and falling apart and fading and dying. But that which is spiritual is eternal. And because we can't see it, we often fail to recognize it. But if you will come into the secret place and allow him to so open your eyes, he begins to teach you how to walk in that spiritual realm. Walk by the Spirit. John G. Lake said, all heavy things are of spiritual substance. Now, in Isaiah 26, 3, it says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. There were peace, shalom, nothing missing, nothing lacking, whole, complete. All the brokenness addressed. Your life utterly, because you cannot, listen, when you make contact with God, He doesn't just come to meet the need, He comes to make whole and to bring you to the place where your mind, that word mind, your emotions, your opinions, and your self-image is all renewed by His Word, where you are truly kept unshaken by that which is going on around. So it doesn't matter so that your symptoms don't dictate, your circumstances don't dictate, the Word does. And you are free. I think about the woman with the issue of blood. She comes and she says, if I just touch him, she saw him as the Lord healer. There's a crowd around him, pressing in, touching him, saw him just as a man, but as some kind of superstar or celebrity. But he was a man and they're touching him and they're receiving nothing. See, there's a touch that changes and there's a touch that does nothing. And because most of our touches with people and situations don't do anything to us, we lose sight and we forget those moments and those touches that change us, that do something deeper in us. She looked and said, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And she touches it. And Jesus stops and said, who touched me? What a thought that we can meet a crowd of people that look like they're worshiping, look like they're doing it. And you're the only one that touches him, lays a hold of him. Oh, that his people would so dwell in the secret place of his presence and know him and have such a holy intimacy and fellowship and stop manufacturing and walking in a performance to walk in the substance that we might carry something. Because as people look at you, they recognize the heart. And so many of us are broken and injured and we reveal it. And we wonder why people don't want anything to do with us because they see all the brokenness, the injuries, the damage. And how the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, becomes the confession of our life. But if you can get into the secret place this day, there you can be made whole. There today can be the day of salvation for you where you touch him. And he so touches you. And you are not the same. John G. Lake said, The knowledge of God that our spirit attains may be conveyed and is conveyed to us through the medium of our minds, through the medium of our brains. The effect of God in our body comes through the medium of the spirit of man, through the mind of man, into the body of man. You are a spirit being, and this is what we've lost sight of. Since the fall, we've walked dictated to by the soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions. But you are a spirit. You are a spirit that has a soul, and that soul is meant to be subject to the spirit, and you walk and live on this earth in an earthen vessel. We are spiritually made new when we accept Jesus. We're called to renew this soul arena, the mind, our will, and our emotions. And we know there's coming a day where we will meet with Him and we'll receive a new body. But while we wait, while we walk on this earth, we have to learn how by the Holy Spirit, through abiding in the Word, stay in the secret place in that holy fellowship with Him, how to walk as spirit beings 
so that we stop allowing our self-image and our opinions to hinder us. Many people disqualify themselves from that moment, that touch point with the Lord God because of how they see themselves. They never submit and bring everything under the blood. Their opinions are too strong. But if we can come like the woman with the issue of blood and see him and receive him for who he is and have a moment where we connect and touch, you will never be the same. Jesus didn't just say to her, woman, be healed. But he said, be healed and made whole. Be complete. He recognized all the brokenness, all the injury, all the damage, all that she had gone through and the consequences. And he made her whole because that's what God does. And he wants this state to so meet with you and make you whole. John G. Lake said, there is a quickening by the Spirit of God so that a man's body, a man's soul or mind, and a man's spirit all alike become blessed, pervaded, and filled with the presence of God Himself in us. And that's what God wants. That you would so come into the secret place and He would fill you. Oh, that we would have such a cry, God, consume me. Swallow me up. I want every part of my being so consumed by you to that place where I lose all identity to this world and I have such a point of contact with you that I am never the same. We have touched and it has so impacted my life because every touch from the Lord God marks you, changes you eternally. There may be moments in this earth, as I said, where you have such a moment with somebody else They're few and far between and you never forget. But with the Lord God, He calls you every single day to have such a touch point which always lifts you, secures you, and makes you so whole, complete, nothing missing, nothing lacking. John G. Lake said, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. That is the rest that a Christian knows whose mind rests in God in real perfect trust. And this is what God wants. But out of this place that you so know, I think of some songs like Amazing Grace and such like, people that somehow got beyond the veil and got a revelation that wrecked them, changed them, that they had to sing a new song that's impacted every generation since. And God wants to take you, think about how we are frail earthen vessels and the Spirit of God comes in that secret place and touches the very heart and in that moment of vulnerability, in that moment of yielding and surrender, in that moment of such intimate touch, He comes and begins to write His law upon your heart and impart the divine nature to you, making of you a son and a daughter making of you a living epistle so that now that you're read of all men that you carry a victory you're no longer broken and injured you no longer walk like somebody of this world but you have something sadly most believers may receive Jesus but they never get the touch and never press in to receive all that he obtained for us when he said it is finished to be truly walking epistles of a victory that we serve a real Jesus who has real answers to real problems and our lives demonstrate it. And there's an abundance in us of something new, something great. John G. Lake said, Now the Spirit of God radiates from the Christian's persons because of the indwelling Holy Ghost and makes him impregnable to any touch or contact of evil forces. He is the subjective force himself. The Spirit of God radiates from him as long as his faith is in God is active. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. I talk to many people and somehow they walk in a fear of the devil. Fear of the enemy. Fear of all these things. When we've lost sight of who we are and that unity and union that we have with the Holy Spirit and how He comes and moves in us mightily. And greater is He that's in us than He that's in the world. 
that we walk in victory, always taking ground. Everywhere you go, the enemy must flee from you because of who's in you. If we get a revelation of that touch, if we would just stay there long enough until we realize who we are because of that touch. 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God who made us. Sufficiency. Where we come complete. Where I truly stand and I have something to give. Where I stand with true value. It's found in Him. It's not a boasting myself. It's not because I have all these skills or whatever. My sufficiency is found in Him. And it comes from the touch points. Oh, if you get a touch point with the Lord God, He will take you out of being ordinary and make you extraordinary. You may look at yourself through your self-image and say, but I'm a nobody. I've got nothing. I'm no good, no use. But oh my God, if you can get a touch point with Him, a true touch point where He imparts Himself to you because He is an extraordinary God. He is the Almighty God. He's the Lord of hosts. And He touches and changes as He imparts Himself to you, lifting you, making you something. He would go on, Paul, to explain the Spirit gives life. That's what He does. In the secret place, the Spirit as we meet imparts life to us, that divine life, so that we have life and that abundant. We stand on this earth as giants in the faith through Him. We stand as voices. We stand with those who have a new song that's, that we sing. It's a song of revelation. It's a song that nobody else can sing because nobody else has got that revelation that we have because of that touch. And as we sing it, it brings such holy conviction because it carries that touch with it. If you get this, some of you are standing for your loved ones, standing for family members. If you get this touch, in this moment, as you touch and speak to others, you carry that life. So your words go deeper. They have an impact to them. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 1, What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. That's what He wants us to have spiritually. That in the secret place we come and meet with Him, meet with the Word, and we touch it, we hear it, we see it, we have something. Sadly, we walk, there's so many people that all they walk in is a head knowledge. They know all about. And we hear message from people that are preaching that have a depth of knowledge all about. But where are those who know Him? Where are those, like John, who can turn and say, that I met that which is from the beginning, the Almighty God. I've met the Holy One. And I've heard, and I've seen, I've looked, I've touched, and I'm never the same. The veil came back, and I got a glimpse. I think of Isaiah 6, verse 7, where he says, He touched my mouth, and with it said, Behold, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is forgiven. He touched me. See, every touch changes you. Every touch will bring such holy conviction. Every touch will then bring a holy transformation. John G. Lake said, The presence of God is to be a living presence, not only in the spirit of a man, nor in the mind of man alone, but also in the flesh of man, so that God is known in all departments of our life, that we are wholly consumed in Him. Walking vessels, Filled with the glory. Filled, these earthen vessels. Filled with His presence. Truly walking epistles. Bringing glory to Him in all that we say and do. No longer walking like the world. But those that have been sanctified, separated, holy unto our God. We're different. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, John went on to say, that which we've seen and heard, we declare to you that you may also have fellowship with us and, true, and, and, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. 
And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. God wants to make you full. That place of abounding, the overflow, that you have something, something to give. See, we've been giving the hurt, the brokenness. We've had nothing of an authority when we meet with people that can change and transform their lives. We may preach something, say something, and desperately want to so get people to the revelation about Jesus, but we're broken. And our words carry that brokenness, and they look and they say, we're looking for life. But when we come and we are so touched by Him in the secret place of His, ve- his presence, He takes this broken vessel and makes it whole. He takes it and consumes it and makes it a holy temple unto Him, a place where His presence dwells, that you, as you go forth, might declare the great and glorious things of Him, and that people would see in you Him. John G. Lake said, the medium by which God undertakes to bless the world is through the transmission of Himself. Now the Spirit of God is His own substance, the substance of His being, the very nature and quality of the very presence and the being and nature of God. We have to understand the Spirit of God comes and there is something imparted to us, a substance. As He comes and abides in us, there's something imparted to us. If we receive Him, if we'll yield to Him, if we'll allow. As we abide in the Word and the Holy Spirit opens it, there's something imparted to us if we'll receive it that will so change us. In Luke 6, verse 19, And all the people were trying to touch Him, for power was coming from Him, healing them all. And no, He didn't just heal, He made whole. There was power coming from Him. And everybody that saw Him wanted to touch Him. Oh, that we would get such a hunger and thirst that, God, I just want to touch you. Because I know that if I touch you, I will be made whole. I will be so radically changed. I will be transformed. John G. Lake said, this is the secret of the abundant life of which Jesus spoke. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. The reason we have the more abundant life is because that receiving God into our being, all the springs of our being are quickened by His living presence. His abiding in us. Oh, glory to God. That that touch as He's allowed to so operate and move in us and take this earthen vessel and, and just let His glory shine forth from it. Let me finish with this. The human being is God's marvelous, wonderful instrument. The most marvelous and wonderful of all creation of God in its capacity to receive and to reveal God. That's why we need that touch, because you were so created. You were so designed that you need that touch, and you need to so receive Him and allow Him to every aspect of your life, and He will make you whole. He will make you complete. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. And He will allow, as you receive Him, He will so fill you that you become a vessel that He's able to reveal Himself through something real, something powerful that we might, like Paul, preach this gospel in the power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Not just in the wisdom of man, not in the power of skillfully prepared messages. You know, if you're standing for a loved one, you can spend hours and days trying to skillfully prepare how you're going to say something to them, how you might touch them, been there, done that, and it fails. It doesn't have the impact as much as you desire, as much as you are sincere, as much as you are true in the words, as much as your heart is right. Your sufficiency is not of you. I can't preach something that I've not got from Him because otherwise all I'm preaching are nice words that might bless you, touch you. But you need life. I need to get a hold of Him, and each one of us need the secret place to get that touch so that we have something. So whatever we do, whatever our serving is, whatever our ministering is, 
wherever our fellowship is, we carry that substance we got from Him, life. And we are so blessed and changed that people see in us a witness, a witness that Jesus truly died, rose, and, and, and now reigns victorious. We need that touch. And I pray, as I said, the Spirit of God would so put in us a hunger, give us such revelation, eyes to see, ears to hear, that we would press in today, like never before, to meet with Him, to know Him, and to be touched by Him. Amen. I truly pray that this message has blessed you. And I just pray that in that name of Jesus, that even right now, the Lord God would bless you and make His face to so shine upon you in the secret place that you would know and you would never be the same. May you be healed, whole, complete. May His peace fill you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, even right now, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for watching and I say that if this message has truly blessed you, would you please like, share, subscribe, and give your comments in the name of Jesus. Because as you do, you really help us. And I just thank you for watching and encourage you to check out more. And I remind you as always that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because through and for Him. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you.